Welcome back to More Sip the Tally. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to talk about the Detroit Lions and the way they just mollywopped in the run game, the Green Bay Packers. But first off, I need to go ahead and admit I was wrong. The Detroit Lions are a damn good football team, and you know, I picked them to be 31st in my preseason power rankings. Couldn't have been farther from the truth. So I'm going to eat my crow and stop betting against them and just fall in that train that the Detroit Lions are a pretty damn good football team. But let's get into, you know, what the Detroit Lions do in the run game. So Thursday versus the Packers. I got some notes here, so that's what I'm looking at. Versus the Packers, they had 39 run plays. They had 20 zone runs. And zone runs, if you don't know, are outside zone, inside zone, and duo, which I think a lot of their runs were duo, which were kind of straight ahead. That's what David Montgomery was getting, and we'll talk about him a little bit later. 19 gap runs. So that's great balance. Gap runs would consider a power counter, pin and pull, stuff like that. They end up rushing for 211 yards Thursday night, which is a great number. Individually, David Montgomery, 32 carries, 121 yards, 3.8 yards per carry, three touchdowns. Great night for David Montgomery. You know, can't take nothing from him, but let's look at the young buck, J. Mark Gibbs. Eight carries, 40 yards, five yards per pop. Now, this is where I have a problem. And again, we'll get back to the subject at hand. But if those carries were flipped, and keep in mind, David Montgomery did his thing. He did what was asked of him. But if those carries were flipped, J. Mark Gibbs has 200 yards rushing. I don't care what anybody says. Nobody can convince me that David Montgomery is better than J. Mark Gibbs, even at this stage in the game. And I, I mentioned this, I think I threw a tweet out there during the game, and somebody said, have you even watched the game? You see J. Mark Gibbs, he can't run inside. Bullshit. J. Mark Gibbs, is, is, he's electric, he's explosive, he can run inside and outside. And he if he gets 32 carries, even if they split these 40 carries and go 20-20, J. Mark Gibbs has 140 uh, yards. If they split these carries down the middle, J. Mark Gibbs has 140 yards. So I don't know, like, what like if David Montgomery got pictures of of um the coach or, or the, the running back coach or what? I don't know if he got secrets or what. The Lord's team must run deep, but for him to only get eight carries and the way they was bludgeoning the Green Bay Packers, it's bull. But that's you know I went off on a tangent. I'm sorry. Let's get back to the lecture. <laughs> Let's talk about the O line. And I pulled up the PFF grades, and you take the PFF grades for what they worth. I just pulled them for reference on here. Taylor Decker, that left tackle. Gap runs 67.2. I'm sorry. Gap runs 39.7. Zone runs 67.2. Jonah Jackson, the left guard. Gap runs 68.5. Zone runs 55.1. That's center, Frank Ragnow. Gap runs 78.3. Zone runs 61.3. Their right guard, Graham Glasnow. Gap runs, he was 64.5. Zone runs 77 even. And then they're all everything right tackle Pene Sewell. Gap runs, he was 43.6. And zone runs, he was 74.6. Now, again, they're good in both. These low numbers, again, you can take them for what they're worth. I just you wanted to use them as a point of reference. But the most crazy thing to me, and I did notice this during the game, their two best graded run blockers were not O-linemen. They're official members of the No Block, No Rock crew. Among Ross St. Brown. And Josh Reynolds, both graded out at 100% in the run game, which I freaking love. I love receivers that block. And you'll see in a couple of these plays that I show you, you'll see the receivers getting in the run game and helping out, you know, helping those running back get yards. Let's go to the film. All right, let's get into this film. Let's talk about this Detroit Lions offensive line. Well, offense as a whole, offense line and running backs. But I stick to what I said about giving J.M.R. Gibbs those carries. It's second and eight from the minus 27. And again, we'll watch it from the all 22 version and kind of break it down from the end zone version. They run an the outside zone right here. And this is one of the uh, one of the what? Eight J.M.R. Gibbs carries. This is the outside zone with him in the pistol. I think they got him lined up in the pistol. Running to the right side, running the Pene Sewell side. And you see all the blocks where they set up. You see you got a double team to your, to our left, 
You got a solo block on 97. You got the center. I think that's Ragnow coming up on Chloe Walker. You got a Quay Walker. I butchered that. You got a double team on the backside on the, the end. And you also got a tight end working on 90 on the backside too. So that double team that's on that end kind of in the right side, that's right. Let me see. Let me get my pointer out. This double team right here. That double team should also take care of this guy too. Should. Because they're working to that backside guy. So it should take care of that guy too. Let's play a little further. The goal is to get a hat on the hat. Now, look who that is. Look who that is. That's Amon Ross St. Brown. Remember I mentioned him being 100% on the run game? Look at him come in and get a hat on Darnell Savage. Look early, look before before we stop it. Darnell Savage is the free guy. Amon Ross St. Brown comes in there and gets the free guy. Guess where J. Mar Gibbs cuts this cuts this ball? Just guess. But before we get to that, you got a hat on a hat. Look at all eight eight blockers. You got a hat on a hat. Number three is Amon Ross St. Brown. Guess where the ball goes? Right there. Mm, mm, mm. No block, no rock. I appreciate your mom, Ross St. Brown. I really, I really do. Let's go to the second play. You got second and 10 from the minus 45. You got same side pin and pull. Another run from J. Mark Gibbs where he picks up a good eight yards. A good eight yards on this one. Now, I do have a little issue with this play, and I'll I show you right here. Most versions of pin and pull. And I'll kind of draw us up a little bit. Most versions of pin and pull, because they're going in this direction. They're going in that direction. So with that being said, normally you would get a down here. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. I did that wrong. Let me take this off. You get a, a down there, and you get that down. Then you get him pulling, and you get him pulling. But in this case, you don't get that. I don't know why. You still get two pullers, but you don't get the two pullers I think you're going to get. Let's watch it and see. You're going to get a cut block. And he does a good job of cutting. I just see that cut right there. And then you get the center and the guard puller. And it's still peeing and pull. But I just I don't know why they did it, but it worked. It worked. Now you get your you get your down blocks. You see them. You got your cut block in the middle. You got your double team on the outside. Then you're going to have a free puller that's going to lead up on number 20. You got your tight end working to number 58. Which is going to leave your, your center out there on a, a DB. You got 77 on a DB and look at the alley that's created. That's what you want. And Gibbs just got to hit it up in there. He's going to get a little help from um, the extra O lineman when they come out. Bang. Get your head down. Keep driving your feet. Eight yard carry. Eight yard carry. That O line, they really be working. And again, even when I did the power rankings, I had their O line ranked third. I just had them as a team ranked 31st. And again, I, I'll admit, I was totally wrong as a team. Totally wrong. I'll eat my crow. You got an outside zone right here. This is one with David Montgomery. And look how big that hole is from the all-22 version. Imagine how big it's going to be when we look at the end zone version. That hole was just that wide from all-22. Got the guy coming in motion. Look at look at the way they caved that, that side of the uh, line in. Right now, it's already a huge gap forming. You already got a huge gap forming. We didn't even mention the puller coming through yet. Look at the puller coming through. Then you got a push crack with the, the close tight receiver. So he's right in front of the defensive end, but he's not going to touch that defensive end. He's going to release inside and go get the safety. The tight end is going to work with 90. The guy that's coming in motion going to work, I'm sorry, with 90, 91. The tight end is going to work to 91. The guy coming in motion going to work with to 91 too, also working to 29. So they got it set up beautifully. And look at that, look at that gap. Look at that gap. Look, look at this. Me, you, and everybody listening can run through that. I could fall forward and roll through that. Man, that O-line is so good. They just walled everybody off. It's crazy how good that O-line is. And we'll close it out with this one. It's first and 10 from the 36-yard line. They run a counter. And again, I, I had to put you some zone in here. I had to put you some gap in here. This is counter. They run a counter with the guard pulling and the tight end. And look at the push they get. 
even though it's counter and you get a lot of stuff moving left to right, as a back, you still teach it. Well, I know I teach it to still hit in the A-gap, in the A-gap area. Even though stuff moves, like you have down blocks and you have people pulling, as a runner, you still want to hit this thing downhill. And if your blockers are do, if your blockers do it right, it allows you to hit the thing right downhill. Watch David Montgomery's track. Watch his track. It's going to be downhill, full speed. He's going to hit it. The timing is going to be perfect. So you got, you got your down blocks. You see all those guys down blocking. Then you're going to get your pullers coming. But watch David Montgomery's track. You see his counter step. You got your two pullers coming. The first one going to kick out the end. Number two is going to wrap the Quay Walker, number seven. Bam, he come right downhill. Right downhill. You couldn't draw it up any better. One more time. You couldn't draw it up any better. You're going to get all your down blocks. By everybody up front, they're working down. You get, now you're going to have your two pullers coming. One's going to kick out 91. Two's going to wrap to Quay Walker. And two don't do a great job of, of wrapping to Quay Walker, but he does enough. And David Montgomery comes right down that, that hash mark. Really don't do much other than that. So, again, this is, I know, I just wanted to take the time out to appreciate the Detroit Lions because I've been hating on them. I ain't going to front. I've been hating on them. But that hate stops today. Detroit Lions, y'all a good team, and I'm going to stop picking y'all on the other channel to lose, uh, especially when I think y'all got a real good chance. And I just picked y'all to lose this week because I was hating. I'm through hating. My crow has been eating. Detroit Lions, y'all got my respect, and you've earned it. So um, salute Detroit Lions, and I'll stop hating. I ate my crow. I officially say I was wrong about the Detroit Lions. So this is Coach Evans with another video from More Sip to Tally. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And remember the motto is FTMF because the film don't lie, unlike some people. And I'll see y'all soon. Peace.